Here I'm going to demonstrate the proper connection of your gauges to a typical commercial refrigeration system. We've got our standard three hose manifold. You want to be sure that both hand wheels are in a clockwise or shut off position, both your high side and low side. We're going to remove the valve caps on the service valves. I've already loosened these with a wrench. Anytime in the field you come up on a system, the valve cap should be tight. The valve stem cap, we'll remove it. If only low pressure sensing is to be done, then we only need to remove the caps on the suction service valve on this particular unit. Right now, I've made a connection to the service valve, but I don't have any pressure reading. Until I begin to front seat the service valve, I will not measure any pressure. Now, front seating the service valve requires you to look at the end of the valve and rotate your refrigeration ratchet refrigeration ratchet, not vice grips, pliers, or crescent adjustable wrench, an actual refrigeration ratchet. It can damage the square shank on that valve stem and make it more difficult to open and close the valve properly. So we're going to do just a couple of turns off of back seat and you'll notice that the low side pressure came up and if we were to measure only the low side pressure once I've got my pressure, if there's no other service that's required, I would then back seat my service valve. And that requires me to reverse my ratchet and back seat. You don't need to firmly back seat this. In other words, just a, a good push or pull should seat the valve. Once you're through, remove your gauge hose connection. When we removed it, we lost the pressure that was only in the hose. Remember, when I back seated the valve, I shut off the flow of refrigerant to the gauge port. We're going to go ahead and continue to measure the high side pressure on this unit. So I will once again slightly front seat the service valve. I'll take my high side hose. Now we do not need any low loss fitting or any adapter like the CD5050. That is not required on a system with service valves. Any type of low loss fitting is only required on a system that does not have service valves that you can stop the flow of refrigerant before you uh, remove your gauges. Here we're going to connect to the high side, and I've already loosened my, my, my gauge port cap and my service valve cap. Now if you set them on top of the unit, you'll notice these are moving around. The vibration, the harmonics from the compressor can cause these to fall off. So it's better to set these off in a stable area so that you don't lose them on the job. We'll connect our high side hose our refrigeration ratchet, we're going to slightly front seat the king valve. And you'll notice that the high side pressure is going to increase. In this case, we're operating about 220 pounds of pressure. Now, to properly purge our gauges, because we're going to want to take the high side pressure and put it back into the low side of the system because connected up to the high side right now, this high side hose has high pressure liquid. That would be an amount of refrigerant that we could lose from the system if we were to back seat the liquid service valve or king valve and remove our hose. So we want to be sure that once these gauges were connected, any air that may have been trapped in these hoses is purged. So what we'll do, we're going to loosen the center hose on the gauges, and we're going to purge just 
a little bit from our high side out of our center hose. That purged this hose because the pressure is coming up to this point and giving us our measurement on the gauge. Likewise on the low side, we must do the same thing. The vapor will pressurize the gauge hose and then pressurize the gauge. So we need to purge any air that may be trapped in this line. So we can purge. And as it's purging, reconnect it to my holding fitting and tighten it. That will seal that hose and we have purged all three of our lines of any air. So if I was to secure this system ready to put the high side back into the low, I'm going to come in and back seat my liquid service valve. And then I will take my high side pressure and open the hand wheel. What that's going to do, you notice my low side did not go up, high side dropped a little. You're putting the pressure that was in the high pressure hose here into the manifold and into this center hose. Since we have it tight on the back, it's not losing refrigerant. Now, I've got a completely pressurized manifold up to this low side gauge point. I can now meter the refrigerant into the low side from the high side. Just crack your hand wheel. Just barely crack it and you'll see that the pressure comes up here. And our pressure is dropping here. Once those two pressures have equalized, you now have purged, notice we're down around 20 pounds here and about 22 pounds here, so they are equal. This hand wheel is open, this hand wheel is open, so all pressure in the lines is equal. What I'm measuring here is my low side because I'm, I'm open from my low side gauge all the way through to this hose, to this gauge. So now I can secure the system. I can remove my high side. I do want to close the high side hand wheel before I remove my hose over here. Otherwise, I would have a loss of low side refrigerant pressure because I still have this open. Could have closed it and that would have ensured no loss. Now, when I'm ready to remove the low side, we'll come in. Take our refrigeration ratchet. And back seat. The service valve. We still have a measurable pressure here, but as soon as I remove the hose, that pressure drops. And I've now taken my gauges off the system, ready to reinstall the gauge port cap and the valve stem cap on the low, high side and low side and we've completed our procedure.